This is the Spotlight, and we want to welcome you to the April 2014 edition of the Spotlight, where we turn the spotlight on the arts. We have an exciting show planned for you again today as we turn the spotlight on the arts. But before I introduce you to our wonderful guest today, I want to remind everyone that tomorrow night, Thursday night, April 3rd, at the Finn Center, we will have our annual Music in Our Schools Month concert. That concert will feature the elementary school chorus, honors chorus, students from all across the district. It will also include the middle school's honors band and chorus, as well as the high school honors band and choir, made up of students from all across the district, approximately 400 students that will be participating in tomorrow's night concert at the Finn Center, starting at 7 o'clock, free to the public. We would love to hear you come. We would love to have you come and hear the work of these awesome students and the clinicians as they present our annual Music in Our Schools Month concert. We look forward to having you there. But at this time, I want to introduce you to our awesome guest, who has also brought some students along with him. This is not his first appearance on the spotlight, but we want to welcome outstanding art educator from Treasure Coast High School, Mr. Akaza Jones, back to the spotlight. Welcome to the show, Mr. Jones. Thank you, sir. It is a pleasure to have you here with us again on the spotlight. It's a pleasure to be here. First of all, before we get into the real reason why we're here today and what we're spotlighting today, tell our viewing audience just a little bit about your background. My background, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in product of St. Lucie County and all my education here from elementary school through high school. I graduated from Fort Pierce Westwood in 1989. And not only that, my parents are all educators, educators from St. Lucie County as well. Mother, my father is a um, retired um, administrator. My brothers are educators as well in the St. Lucie County school system. What do you teach at Treasure Coast High School? At Treasure Coast High School, I teach all the drawing classes, drawing one, two, three, which is an honors class. And I teach ACE Art Design, which is a collegiate class through the University of Cambridge. So when we talk about ACE, ACE is a little bit like um, IB, a kind of dual enrollment, the same kind yes, of sir. idea? Yes. When Art class the test, they actually get a, a college credit for it. Okay. So they receive college credit once they take that uh, national exam. If it, I'm, exactly. Okay. All right. International exam. Um, what kind of shows have your students produced, your art students? My, we produce art shows pretty much every, every semester at Treasure Coast High School. Um, we also participate in some of the art shows around town. I actually have some of my kids' artwork being displayed on the um, WLX channel as well, in the and, gallery. And you also did some work for the airport? Yes, sir. Students? The St. Louis County Airport. Um, there's artwork displayed in their lobby. And I think it's, it's still there. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it is. <laughs> and I, I think we have a new legal department in our, our school exactly. district. And your students... They have, I have artwork from my students that are in the legal department for our county and the St. Lucie School Board and in the transportation department as well. Great, great work. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it seems like you're a real advocate for the arts, that you're real passionate about the arts. Mm -hmm. What medium of the art is, is your specialty? My medium that I specialize in is graphite. I love to draw and I love to shade and I love to teach kids how to draw and shade. That's one of my strong points. But we do a lot of other things as well at Treasure Coast High School. And I also all paint and I can do some of the digital stuff as well. If I'm not mistaken, you have a connection to the famous highwayman? Yes, Alfred Hare. Um, Alfred Hare was one of my father's best friends, and Sid Gibson was also another one of my father's friends, and they all were real famous with, amongst the highwaymen. I think Alfred Hare was probably the most, the most prominent, and he basically painted, he painted a lot of images for my father. Mm -hmm. that are hanging up in this house now, and he gave them some for their, him and my mom's wedding gift. And they're probably worth a lot of money. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they are. Yeah. I'm sure they are. Um, mm. you're, you're an art teacher. So yes, why sir. is it important for us to encourage students to participate in one or more uh, forms of the art? When kids, participate in, when, when kids participate in arts, any form of art, whether it's performing or visual, they, they basically excel and they do better on standardized testing. They do better with, with things like um, science projects, history projects. They, they kind of stand out amongst their peers. They, they become leaders. It really helps them out academically as well as socially. 
Great. Just being able to ex express themselves on a different level. How many students do you teach during the course of the day? Um, 160 well, students a day. Okay. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of students. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of students. Mm -hmm. Now, there is this new organization okay. on the campus of Treasure Coast High School. Um, and it's called the spoken word, and it has a very specific word, uh, that title for it. Tell us a little bit about this new organization. Okay, this new, this new club is called Floetic, and it's basically the word was put together using flow, which is how it's basically a movement. It could be almost considered like a principle, and etic, which comes from the word poetic, and it was basically created that way. It's called Floetic, and it's basically a club based on spoken word poetry. Spoken word poetry is basically poetry that's basically verbalized. Um, original, the traditional style of poetry is basically written and is read. With spoken word poetry, is written as well, but when it's spoken, it's spoken with a little more emphasis or a little more feeling or emotion. So I would kind of consider spoken word poetry somewhat of a performing arts. Tell, tell me how, how this because we know it's new. How did this new club? Uh, what was the, how was it birthed? Um, what was the idea? Who did it originate from? The the, the origins base actually go all the way back to ancient Greece. Um, they did spoken word poetry in some of the Olympic style games that they had back then. In in the United States, it t it basically exploded after the Harlem Renaissance, mm -hmm. all right, with Langston Hughes and some of the other uh, Frederick Douglass doing that area. They weren't spoken word poetry, but they they kind of contributed to that scene. Um, in the 90s, it exploded. It kind of died out a little bit from the 60s between the 70s and 80s. In the 90s, it actually exploded on the scene again um, with um, Russell Simmons. And Russell Simmons actually had a show called Deaf Poetry Jam, where he actually had a collaboration of a lot of poets that would come on stage. And after that, it pretty, pretty much excelled. And it's still on the forefront today in some of the jazz clubs and up north and but it, it's, it's, a, it's a form of expression and verbalizing issues, social issues. Um, it's very intellectual, which is why I, 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 I really wanted to try to incorporate that into the um, arts at Treasure Coast, because I know some kids, they can, they, some kids can visualize things in a two-dimensional world. Some, some kids can visualize things in a more performance-based world. So I was like, wow, it wouldn't it be cool to have a club that's based on poetry, which is a lot of writing, believe it or not. So we'll, we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. um, whose idea was it to start Floetic at, at Treasure Coast? It was actually my idea. It was it was my idea to do this because I know I, I've seen kids speak, and I know a, a, a lot of stu students actually have a lot of talent in speaking and standing out amongst their peers and being leaders. And I was like, wow, this would be this would be a cool thing. And just kind of studying some of the um, spoken word artists, seeing how intellectual they are. You know, I thought it would be a awesome idea. How many kids are in your program? Right now it's about 14. Okay, okay. Now, you, you were alluding to the fact about uh, it being a lot of writing. And mm -hmm. everything that we do in schools, we want it to benefit students on an academic yes. basis. So how does spoken word uh, benefit students' uh, education on the education side? Okay, on the educational side, it's, it, poetry is basically writing. All right. So before you can even think about writing a poem, you have to be able to have to be able to think creatively. You have to be able to think outside the box. And implementing writing styles, and is is like one of the most important aspects of writing poetry. So these kids, they understand that the writings that they do can be persuasive. Um, they can be descriptive. So um, a lot of the the writings that they do are, are on a persuasive because they talk a lot about morals and ethics and you know, the rights and wrongs and society and so forth. Um, the vocabulary is very important. One of the things that they're really gifted at is, is using vocabulary, metaphors, um, making comparisons between different words with different eras. There's a lot of historical aspect. These kids actually study. They, they know dates. They know situations in history that took place in the past as well as in the future, and they make comparisons and write these in their, in their lyrics. So they have to research. They stay in dictionaries. They're, they're always in the thesaurus, you know, that, because what I encourage them to do is, is to step outside and use words or intellect that they're not, you, you know, used to. So 
it, it, it's really important that they, you know. I, I heard you mention a whole bunch of educational things that, that benefit children. Okay. Um, we, all, all of our students have to take the Florida Rights exam. Yes. So when you talk about persuasive yes. uh, writings or descriptive writings, yes. um, that is part of the curriculum, Exactly. the way students are taught. And when students have a strong command of vocabulary and, mm. and word uses, okay. using similes and, for, and, and metaphors, yes. uh, and, and I know, if I'm not mistaken, in spoken word, there's a lot of imagery yes. that, that students use to deliver a point as mm. well as... Uh, it's it's very rhythmic. Yes. So it's metered, which could mm -hmm. be a part of music. Yes. So you you're blending all of these art forms into this spoken word, which is like a performance. Yes. The art. It, it, would I be correct? It, yes. It's that they're basically performing. Great. They're great. Performing poetry. Um, when, when we look at spoken word poetry, um, how can teachers benefit uh, the writing process by using it, it, spoken word as a part of their curriculum it would i think they can they can really utilize spoken word in their in their curriculum to uh, for kids to express themselves creatively and in their writings the the topics that they choose are so meaningful that they really love to write this stuff so i i think using some of the topics and using spoken word as a tool would would just take i mean it would be wonderful if that that could happen one of the first things I did, when the first things in our first meeting, is I gave them a theme, just like you would give them a theme in, 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 in a writing class, you know? And they had to write on that theme. And I told them, when, you, when you're writing on this theme, I don't want it to be literal. I don't want to look at it. I don't want you to write, and I read your writing, and I understand it. I want you to be surreal with this. I want you to be abstract with this, just like in the arts when we express ourselves in different ways. I want to be able to, be able to study what you say, as opposed to saying, I get it. So I actually teach them to, or I, I encourage them basically to go outside the box and find words and find things that have um, similar meanings, but words that they're not familiar with. So they, they really do a lot of research. And they really stay uh, in the dictionaries. When, when I hear the point that you give them a, gave them a theme, mm -hmm. I can see students brainstorming. Exactly. I can see students doing a talk and share yes. or a talk and yes, write. Yes, they do that all the time. Um, Forums. Uh, yes, I, they they really get serious with it. I, I can see them collaborating. Yes, and and then I can see them writing and rewriting and mm -hmm. editing. Yes, uh, to get the final product and then performing, which is all a part of our writing process. Exactly, exactly. And then to know that students are doing research. Yes, to go back to historical points. That that is amazing, and and, and this is a. Uh, art form that, that we can continue to use yes. as an extension of our writing curriculum, as extension of our history curriculum. Yes. Um, it, it, before I, I, I go, um, if you had an opportunity to, to speak to parents, what would you tell parents to entice them to make sure that their students were involved in, involved in one or more areas of forms of the arts? I would tell parents to always encourage their kids to express themselves in a creative way because it, 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 it makes their problem solving skills um, <clears throat> more advanced. Their critical thinking levels will, will raise up a little, you know, um, and, and in the end you'll see increases in their academics as well. So I've always encouraged parents that the performing arts as well as the visual arts should be a very important aspect of their educational. And if I can add one more thing, one of the goals that I set when I started this one of the things that I would love to see is other schools starting their own um, spoken word groups so we can actually have poetry slams or poetry sessions, you know, where these, they can actually get together and display their skill, skills and their talents on an intellectual level and something in a conscious level with the spoken word. It's well, Mr. Jones, it's a pleasure for us to help introduce Floetic to our, our, our viewing it. audience as well as uh, to introduce these students to the Spotlight. Okay. We want to thank you for being a guest on the Spotlight again, okay. and we're looking forward in our next segment to meeting the students of Floetic. At this time, we're going to uh, stop, and we're going to meet the students and hear some of their performances mm -hmm. from We Flow Floetic from Treasure Coast High School. My emotions in this ink, I decided to leak it on this paper. I was supposed to be working on my college essay, but I was like, nah, I'll do it later. Like I do with all assignments, man, I'm blinded by these teachings. Taught to reach for the stars, but... but are you practicing what you're preaching? Taught to reach for the stars, but 
on whose solar system. Because the only time stars are attainable is when I set up my tree for Christmas. I ain't with it. You asked me how I can believe in something so unseen, yet felt and breathed in so clearly. I try step after step to climb past the anxiety of speaking, the pain of a heartbreak, and the mental stability I need to deal with a world full of insecurities. And I have many. Yet you ask me how I so easily put off the aspects of this tainted reality and how I keep a smile on my face easy because I don't show it. Because once you do, they'll try their hardest to destroy it, no matter the cost. Negative thoughts won't stop until all the joy in your heart is completely lost, but find it. Like finding truth hidden beneath a beautiful lie, beneath the number of friends that you think you have. Yeah, it's cool to be cool, but even better when you just be you and you don't need anybody else to be that or agree. In fact, you will always be everything you need, even when you can't see it. I do. Yeah, you. With all your judgments, assumptions, and questions on what makes me me, Sammy. My pedal's kind of dirty because my hometown made me sturdy. But I still gracefully raised from the concrete. I'd be absurd if I ever returned. My past is in the dark, not because it's bad, but because it's hard. I'm trying to go fast into my future. If I'm looking back, I won't go far. See, you would have asked the rose that grew from the concrete why it had damaged petals. On the contrary, you would only recognize its will to meet the sun. See, we are the roses, and this is the concrete, and these are my damaged petals. School, more like a self-evaluation. Weak-minded get left behind like a self-dedication. My race and contemplating in class, thinking of papers in front of moi, but can't seem to put pen to the paper. Mom says knowledge is power, so I read on, but X and Y and benefiting the brother, so what's she preaching? Teachers teaching the lessons, but really teaching me life skills. How will I have a wife? Nice house, if I lack skill. I won't, though. Ambition is the key to separate the slackers from where they won't go. So I strive for it. Degree is what I need, so by all means, I'm arrive for it. And I wish for all to do the same. We head into the top, but we're in different lanes. School mind. Dare to be more than a statistic. Yes, you heard me. I'm speaking to your heart right now. Open your sagacious labyrinth and think, oh, young generation. Because you were designed, even predestined, for maximum performance. So divorce from being dilatory or even worse, a microcosmic odyssey functioning at low idiosyncrasy. Because, because to boast for a million dollar dream means to travail with a billion dollar work ethic with the eye of the tiger and the heart of the champion. So ingurgitate this gusty breath and understand that you are nobody's work in progress but yours. You're not your circumstance or your situations. And no, you are not your mistake. So hold your world up, Atlas, because it's at your fingertips. Thank you. Welcome back to the second segment of the Spotlight. That was really awesome for us to hear the spoken word poetry performed by these awesome students from Treasure Coast High School. And since we heard a, had an opportunity to hear their work, why don't we meet them? Welcome to the Spotlight. First of all, I'd like to uh, get each of you to introduce yourself to our viewing audience. All right, well, thank you for allowing us to be here. My name is Evander Felix. My name is Erica Russell. My name is Sammy. My name is Sammy Renee. My name is Jamar Buckley. Again, I want to welcome each of you to the spotlight. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what grade you're in, uh, if you're involved in any other clubs on campus, that kind of thing. Okay, well, um, I'm a senior at Treasure Coast High School, and... Uh, some of the things I'm involved in is mainly Floetics and also a uh, student representative. To student government? Yes. Okay. Sir. What are you planning on doing after you graduate since you're a senior? Uh, I plan on going to college and, uh, and studying and working. So what, what's your major going to be? Major uh, political science or finance. Okay. All right. Erica? I'm a senior as well. Most of the clubs that I'm involved in is just Floetics and dance. I'm also working on starting a mentor group for young ladies that are freshmen at the school. So you're in dance, so you'll be in the Believe concert that's yes, coming I up? Yes, I will. Do you have a date for Believe? Mm -hmm. Sometime in May, I know, but I'm not exactly Yeah, sometime in May, I'm not sure neither. What are you going to do after you graduate since you're a senior, Erica? After I graduate, I am going to college as well, and I'll be working. Okay. All right, Sammy. Um, my name is Sammy Renee. Uh, I'm 17. I'm a senior. Um, after I graduate, I plan on going to college either it's either here in Fort Pier I mean Port St. Lucie or Orlando for you know physical therapy and uh I'm in Floetics 
you know, I'm, a, I'm involved in a youth group. I'm one of the leaders in a youth group here in Fort Pierce at the the church on Orange Avenue. So, uh, you know, I just like to be involved in a lot of spiritual stuff. That's basically me. All right. Jamar. Um, my name is Jamar Buckley. I'm a junior. Um, other clubs that I uh, volunteer in are French club, sometimes on Mondays. And yeah, after college, I plan to um, go into business management. Again, I want to welcome each of you to the spotlight. Tell me this. This is one of the newest clubs on campus. Why did you decide to join Floetic? Well, I decided to join Floetics because uh, I feel like uh, everybody wants to be a part of something, and Floetics gave me the opportunity to be part of a group and to also express my talent and what I love doing. Anybody else? I wanted to be in Floetics because I feel like I have something to say. I have something to pour into my generation, and I actually want to be one of the champions for my generation. If I can help something, I want to do that. Okay. Um, I always thought that I was a leader, and I knew that, you know, being in Floetics would help bring that leader out of me. And I also like hearing other people's, you know, voices, because it inspires me to be a better person or a better writer myself. So these guys inspire me, and they help me go further with, you know, what I love to do already. So. You ready? Um, I just wanted to be heard, because I used to, like, write since I was five years old. And, well, since I was 13 years old, I'm sorry. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to be heard and have people hear me and, you know, share our talent together. When we think about spoken word, what does that mean to you? Or what's your definition of spoken word? Well, my definition of spoken word would be poetry that jumps off a page, um, which means uh, poetry that, uh, that has to jump out the audience, has to make them, has, you have to move them emotionally. That's spoken word to me. That's what I strive to do. Erica, I saw you reaching for the mic. Go ahead. How I describe spoken word is you have poetry, like something you just read, and then you have spoken word, like basically what Evander was saying. It grabs out. It touches the audience or the listener, and I feel like it also gives you a chance to connect with whoever you're reciting to. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead, um, Sam. Spoken word is not just, I mean, they, they basically said all that I wanted to say, but it's just, it's a lot of, it's not just reading words that rhyme. It's a lot of putting your act into it, putting yourself, playing the character, or, you know, just doing what you doing what you need to do to be able to just move people, basically. Also, a lot of people might mistake it for anger, but it's not really anger. It's just passion. And I feel like that's what spoken word is. It's a lot more connecting with whoever you're reciting to. I would say um, spoken word poetry is like grabbing the hearts of others and, you know, the perspective of other people's lives. You know, like people don't really speak about, you know, the stuff that they go throughout their day, like their daily lives. So... We do that for them. So would I be correct in saying that um, you want the audience to feel the words, not just hear the words? Would I yes, be definitely. Okay, cool. Um, how, how does being in Floetic help you academically in your language class, social studies class, your reading class, your math? How does it help you be a better student academically? Um... For me, I like speaking in front of people. I'm a people person already. And I take pointers based on how these guys perform in front of people, and it just and it helps me, and I take pointers, and I, it just helps me in, like, my speech class. It helps me in my history class. When I had to do my culminating project, I had to speak in front of people about my job and about my life. So learning how to speak better in front of people and in front of crowds of audience without being nervous or even showing signs of nervousness, even if I am, it really just pushed me and benefited me, you know, in the long run. And I know it will just continue to get better. Anybody else? It challenged me to find words that are more, like, more challenging to go in a dictionary to look up what certain things mean. How to use it. Is it a noun? Is it an adjective? Is it a pronoun? Stuff like that. For me, that is. Okay. Let me ask this question. Who are some of the influential spoken word artists that, that, are, that you're passionate about? Or that you listen to? Off the top, um, Sunny Patterson. Um, her, her work is uh, very deep and it, it speaks to uh, a lot of stuff that's going on, a lot of stuff that people don't normally talk about. And uh, it's, it makes me strive to uh, want to educate myself and do better and stand for something. Um, the artist that I'd like to name, like, 
he's not known for spoken word, but he does spoken word, and his name is DMX, who you know a lot of people might not think of, but his I've listened to his Def Jam spoken word, and it was so aggressive and passionate that it just it pushed me in like it just pushed me literally to just go and start writing writing more and writing about how I really feel instead of trying to write something that sounds nice so he really just brought the aggression out of me to want to just capture people's minds and tell them what they need to know not what they want to know so like he just he did that with me people that certain poets that inspired me to do what I'm doing Sojourner Truth she wrote a poem, Ain't I a Woman? And that just hit me like the way she was talking, how she had to survive on her own and do stuff for herself. That's what grabbed me as well, Maya Angelou. And those are just certain women that I look at. I'm like, wow, like I like what they do and I like how they can hold their own as young as women in this. No problem, no problem. Go ahead, Jamar. Um, Jefferson Beth, he's on um, YouTube. I listen to him all the time. Well, I um, watch his videos all the time and I would say he's like very like inspiring to others like he actually like cuz like sometimes I like, feel like not writing or whatever or I I don't I, I get writer's block or something and I watch his videos and you know I'd be like hmm this is like a good way to go about something would common be a spoken word artist yes I listen to common all the time and like he just he puts it in a rap and it's just it's soothing to my ears and it's just like I don't know, it's really nice and he just brings out what you need to hear and I wish he was a bigger artist than he already is. And he, he is big, but as far as mainstream, I wish that was what people tried to go after instead of the common trendy things that, you know, people normally rap about. Like he's really he's a real spoken word artist and he puts that in his raps and that's just it's amazing to me how he keeps it going. Well, Evander, Erica, Sammy, and Jamar, I wanna thank you for being our guests here on the spotlight. It's been a pleasure having you here to talk with me, but also to hear your spoken word. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from Floetic in the very near future. And to our viewing audience, we once again thank you for tuning in here on The Spotlight. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, April 3rd, at the Finn Center at 7 o'clock for the Music in Our Schools Month concert. Thank you again for joining us here on The Spotlight, where we turn the spotlight on the arts. <laughs>